Infinite Life is a 3.6 meter tall sculpture in front of the Taipei 101 building. It was created by local sculptor Kang Wu Xiang, who made the work from discarded elevator cables. He's found a creative and ingenious way to bring new life to materials that would otherwise have been discarded as scrap. Follow our report as we learn more about this artist and his extraordinary gift for creating art from non-traditional materials. Taipei 101 is the world's fifth tallest building. In front of it sits the public artwork, Infinite Life. Each day the artwork attracts visitors who draw near so they can take in its metal aura. This work was created by white-haired local sculptor, Kang Mu Shang. I'm very moved because this work needs people to interact with it. It needs people to appreciate it, touch it, love it, or hold it. I once saw a pregnant woman who was standing next to one of my works from the Life series, and I thought she was communicating with the work. Kang Mu Shang is a native of Miaoli's Tongshao, where he grew up in a big family that produced traditional handicrafts. At the age of 25, he went to Miaoli's Sani, which is Taiwan's largest wood carving arts center, to become a wood carver. However, he soon gave this up to follow his own path. I was 30 years old and I wanted to give up wood carving because I knew that my predecessors, including my elder brother, who were involved in traditional wood carving, didn't leave behind many works of value. I knew that I could not just keep copying pieces like they came from a mold. I needed to find a creative way to pursue art as I wanted to become an artist. In 2002, Taiwan was hit by a large number of successive typhoons, which knocked down thousand-year-old trees that were washed all the way down to the coast. Kang arrived at Guishan Island and was one of the first artists working with driftwood created by this disaster. I can only hope for what I might salvage today and what I may run into tomorrow. For example, I may find some camphor wood today and perhaps I may see Cyprus tomorrow. Kang lived in solitude on Guishan Island to gain inspiration for his life series, which includes a primal image of a mother holding her young infant. Later, Kang would turn to bronze and stainless steel sculpture to express the same vitality. In 2012, the world's tallest environmental skyscraper was planning to replace the cables for its high-speed elevators, which led to a chance opportunity for Kong. We were advised to sell the cables to a recycling center, but we didn't really feel like we wanted to part with them. So we decided to keep them and see if they might have some use later on. I happened to meet Kang Mu Xiang, who is one of our tenants. He is a very passionate Taiwanese artist. And when we saw his wood carvings, we asked him if he had any interest in turning these cables into artwork. When Kang first viewed the cables, he felt as if he were experiencing a dialogue between dream and reality. At that time, I saw these used cables and began to think of my parents. I remember when I was a child, my mother would wear a straw hat and my father would carry straw baskets on his shoulder. I hope to turn these cables into an important work of art. If you bend the cable, it snaps back. The cable is just so stiff. So I asked him how he planned to work with it. And secondly, I asked him what he was planning to make. I wanted to use my strength and my methods to pull and create these lines. Xu Rongjiang said I was crazy and this was not going to work. While Xu Rongjiang was not optimistic, Kang decided to go ahead. He actively sought ways to clean the grease off the cables, as well as different ways to bend them. Later he came to me with a poster which contained an artwork that was also wound with steel cable. When I saw it, I was a bit startled. And then I thought, what didn't seem possible, Kang was going to make happen. To support these wires, I first made an actual size model from styrofoam and wound the cables around it. Afterwards, I melted away the styrofoam by setting it on fire. But the sculpture had nothing to support it and became unstable. With no way to allow the work to keep its shape long term, Kang's effort was for all practical purposes a failure. 
However, the problem inspired an architect friend, Xu Rong Zhang, who came up with a new idea. He used the computer to calculate weight-bearing points of support and create an interior frame from pieces of stainless steel. The innovation gave the project new life. The hardest part was working with these hard materials, as the cables had to be heated upwards of a thousand degrees to be able to bend them. Despite all the physical pain, burns to my hands and eyes, and the mental anguish that I suffered, the cables sometimes still wouldn't do what we wanted them to do. When I heated a cable and pulled it, if the placement was wrong, it later would not return to its original position. In 2013, Infinite Life finally was complete and put on display in Taipei. Made from cables that had once embraced and shuttled countless lives up and down the Taipei 101, the work was a celebration of the joy of a rebirth. I used a lot of time and worked tirelessly to complete this project. I used my life to give life to this sculpture. I didn't care if I died for this work, as I just wanted to present it as a gift to the earth. Overcoming numerous difficulties, Kang finally managed to transform the retired elevator cables from Taipei 101 into a work of art. Kang hopes that these discarded cables can ultimately inspire others to contemplate and think about the value of life.